picture this. <laughs> you're in class. That's you right there. That, 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 that's you. And you're learning about prime numbers. Those beautiful, magnificent beasts of mathematics that everyone knows and loves. Other numbers look at them and think, God, I wish that were me. Now you learn that the definition of a prime number is that it is a number that can only be divided by one and itself. Now what comes to mind after you learn that? Is it A. Wow, these things are awesome. I want to dedicate my life to searching for them. Is it B. Damn, these things are great. Is it C. I love these things. Or is it 3? Is 1 a prime number? It can only be divided by 1 in itself. Now picture this. You ask your teacher that question, and they tell you, yes, 1 is, in fact, a prime number. You're satisfied with that answer because 1 appears to fulfill the definition of a prime number. It's a number that can only be divided by 1 and itself, which is 1. But your teacher would be wrong, and by extension, you would be too. But I'm not wrong, because I can never be wrong. And I'm here to tell you that one is not, in fact, a prime number. But why isn't one a prime number? It can only be divided by one in itself. Yeah, that's true, but that's kind of like saying that a country is a place that has territory and a flag. That's... Tr uh, that's true, but it doesn't really tell the whole story. Is Ohio a country, then? I don't think so. I would make an Ohio joke, but that meme has kind of been run into the ground by this point. So let's just move on and cut to the chase. And let's get to what I know you're here for. <coughs> one is not a prime number, because to call one a prime number would completely trample on the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now, I know that this isn't a linguistics class, not yet anyways, but do you see that word there? That one. Yeah, yeah, that one. It's fundamental, so we cannot do anything that would undermine it. It states that every positive integer greater than 1 has a unique representation as a product of primes. For example, 2 is equal to 2. Wow, how shocking. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. 12 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3. And the number that I know you've been dying for me to talk about, 45,462,167, is equal to 163 times 278,909. They all have a unique representation as a product of primes. Unique meaning that there's only one. I know, how shocking. But let's say, hypothetically, for the sake of the argument, that we allow one as a prime number. Now, how many ways can we write six as a product of primes? Well, it's 2 times 3, that's one way to write it, as a product of primes, and it's 1 times 2 times 3, yes, there's another way, and it's 1 times 1 times 2 times 3, and it's also 1 times 1 times 1 times 2 times 3, and it's also 1 to the power of 82,589,933 times 2 times 3. Instead of there being only one way to write it as a product of primes, there are now infinitely many. Because you can add as many ones as you want, and the result will still be the same. It will still be six. Now that's a bit cringe, if you ask me, because the primes suddenly become less special. And we can't have that now, can we? We love primes, don't we? Yes, we do. So, naturally, we have to keep them special. But wait, I hear you say, why can't a number have more than one way to write it as a product of primes? Well, because it's a lot less cool if there are infinitely many. And that's not the only reason why we don't or shouldn't consider one to be a prime number. Another reason is that the sieve of Eratosthenes... Eratosthenes... Wait... How do you pronounce this? I actually forgot to look up how to pronounce this before I hit record. How do you say it? 
Eratosthenes, but Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes, wait. Pronouncenames.com. How do you say it? Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes, okay. I'm going to leave that in the video. Uh, the sieve of... Oh, I lost my place in the script. Wait. I'm going to leave that in the video, too. <laughs> the sieve of Eratosthenes wouldn't work properly if we said that 1 is a prime number. Now let's write every number from 1 to 100. And then let's cross off every second number except 2. So let's do that. Very nice. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So 3 remains. So now let's cross off every third number except 3. Ooh, very good. 5 remains. So let's do every fifth number except 5. Of course, I shouldn't need to specify that at this point, but still. Now let's do every seventh, and eleventh. Uh, oh wait, no, we don't need to do every eleventh, never mind. <laughs> the results give us every prime number from one to one hundred. Now isn't that beautiful? Now let's reset it and call one prime. So let's cross off every first number. Except for one. That's a weird sentence to say, but let's do it anyways. Basically, what that means is let's cross off every number aside from one. Uh, suddenly, one becomes the only prime number. Yeah. And all the actual prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, so, so on and so forth, all become non-prime. Or as we say in the prime num in the prime world they become composite now that is definitely something that we don't want and it would happen if we called one prime but wait i hear you again i hear you say again can't we call one prime but exclude it from the sieve of eratosthenes why would we do that the sieve of eratosthenes is supposed to generate primes if we have a number that we're calling prime why would we exclude it that's like excluding me from a convention of cool people, or excluding chips from a bag of lays. If you want to call one prime, then you have to acknowledge that it functions much, much differently than the other primes. Two times three will always equal six, but if you add another two, the result is twelve. One times two times three will also always equal six. You can add as many ones as you want, and it will still equal 6. That's a very strange way for a prime to function, and it's for that reason and others that we do not call one prime, although this was a matter of considerable controversy up until around the mid-20th century. Me personally, I have even seen uh, trivia games uh, listing questions such as, except for one, Name the first ten or so prime numbers. And that really that really boils my blood. That really Mondays my Garfield, personally. <laughs> so, we say, uh, one is not prime. By convention, it is neither prime nor composite. And it is instead called a uh, an identity element, the multiplicative identity, and a unit. Yes, an absolute unit. Now look... Yeah, here's the deal. You can call one prime if you want. You'd be wrong, but you can still do it. I can't stop you. Uh, but you can't deny that it behaves much differently than your conventional primes. 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11, and so on, you know. And from, what, from, from that, and from what I've shown you, you can hopefully probably deduce that it deserves to be in its own category for... The reasons that I have listed, and that is what mathematicians agree on today. One is its own thing, its own absolute unit. So there you go. That is why one is not a prime number. I hope you enjoyed. If you like the video, uh, then subscribe or don't. I I, I don't really care. Bye.